In the vibrant heart of Dubai, a city renowned for its audacity and breathtaking marvels, there stands a project that once glittered like a beacon of ambition on the world stage. Behold, the World Islands, a name that beckons the imagination with promises of grandeur and global representation. Picture this audacious endeavor. 300 islands fashioned out of the relentless sea, a staggering $10 billion expended, and a mind-boggling 300 million cubic meters of sand transported. The goal? To defy the very elements to craft coveted new realms amidst the shimmering expanse of the Persian Gulf. The concept was brilliantly straightforward, yet breathtakingly audacious. Maximize Dubai's finite coastline by conjuring up a realm of luxury hotels, resorts, and opulent residences, all within a stone's throw from the bustling heart of Dubai. Just a helicopter ride, or a swift speedboat jaunt away. These artificial wonders known as the World Islands were more than mere patches of sand. They were conceived as miniature reflections of Earth's continents, a captivating microcosm where living, vacationing, and conducting business would blend seamlessly amidst the azure waters. The vision, wrapped in the allure of promotional films, was nothing short of spectacular a jewel in the crown of the Persian Gulf. Each island was to encapsulate the essence of a world culture or continent, an opulent and lavish portrayal of our planet. Two decades down the line from the project's inception, the stark contrast between dream and reality is glaring. Only a scant few islands have been brought to life, and they stand as surreal oases amidst vast barren expanses of untouched sands. This despite over half the islands being snapped up shortly after they were made available. So what transpired in the labyrinth of ambition and ambition that is the world islands? To unveil the destiny of these audacious isles, we must embark on a journey through Dubai's evolution. Once a humble fishing village with a mere handful of souls, Dubai's origins were indeed modest. 19th century British naval surveyors painted a picture of simplicity, yet the city possessed a jewel in its crown, a strategic location. Proximity to Iran and pivotal east-west trade routes transformed it into a a thriving port city shunning its fishing-dependent past for a world of prosperous commerce. In the early 20th century, pearls became Dubai's lifeblood, ushering in prosperity, but also a dangerous dependence on a single commodity. This vulnerability was exposed during the Great Depression of the 1930s, when cultured pearls flooded the market. By the way, if you like the video so far, we would be thankful if you support us with a thumbs up. If you are new here, we would be happy if you also give us a subscription. But now back to the topic. In 1966, oil's discovery heralded a new era for Dubai. The black gold injected vitality into the city, attracting waves of workers and fortifying the economy. Yet once more, Dubai found itself shackled by over-reliance on oil with up to half of its economy tethered to this fickle industry. Mindful of the finite nature of their oil reservoirs, Dubai's leaders initiated a concerted effort to diversify. Oil revenue was channeled into ambitious infrastructure projects like Rashid Port and Jebel Ali Port. Concurrently, substantial funds were allocated to the creation of tourist attractions coupled with a business-friendly environment featuring enticing tax incentives. The goal was crystal clear, to transform Dubai into a city capable of rivaling the likes of London, New York, and Tokyo. The late 1990s and early 2000s witnessed an unparalleled real estate boom with iconic structures like the Burj Al Arab and the Burj Khalifa piercing the desert sands. Real estate prices soared and a peculiar challenge emerged. The scarcity of coveted coastal land fueling demand prompted the creation of artificial islands and peninsulas to expand the canvas for living and resorting. Palm Jumeirah, the first of these ventures, not only proved economically viable, but also drew sharp environmental criticism. And then the World Islands took the stage a concept that dazzled global imaginations. In 2003, the state-owned Nakheel Company embarked on the monumental endeavor of reclaiming land from the sea. By 2008, the project was poised for completion, and due to the clamor, the island count swelled from 200 to a staggering 260. Even before the islands took full form, they were changing hands at a breathtaking pace. Formula One legend Michael Schumacher, a seven-time world champion, received an island as a gift from Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, underscoring the project's potential. Speculation swirled that A-list celebrities like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie had snagged their own islands, though these rumors proved unfounded. By the time the sand-filling phase concluded, a remarkable 70% of the world had already found new owners. Dubai had essentially validated the project's financial soundness. However, 2008 ushered in a pivotal moment that would reshape the course of the world islands, just as it did for global real estate. The worldwide financial crisis sparked by the real estate collapse in the United States sent shockwaves across the globe. Property values plummeted, banks faltered, and Dubai's real estate market tumbled. One might ponder the connection between a real estate crisis in the United States and these embryonic islands in Dubai. Yet the interconnectedness of the global real estate landscape revealed its profound relevance. Most islands belong to international real estate developers with grand visions of development and profit. Before
Before 2008, this was a highly profitable model, but the financial crisis reshaped the terrain. The global real estate market had irrevocably changed, and real estate developers suffered substantial losses. Risky luxury ventures like the World Islands lost their luster, and Dubai's real estate prices nosedived. In response, many developers paused construction, waiting for more favorable time. While Dubai bounced back relatively swiftly from the crisis, the World Islands faced unique hurdles. The project had lost momentum, and the initial fervor had waned. Potential investors and developers hesitated reluctant to be solitary pioneers in a desert expanse. Ecological concerns about massive terraforming efforts added another layer of complexity to the conundrum. The Dubai government's seeming indifference toward the project only exacerbated its woes. Over two decades of development, progress on the world islands had been sluggish, to put it mildly. However, beneath the veneer of stagnation, faint glimmers of life were discernible. Two ambitious projects emerged, the Heart of Europe and the Anantara World Island Dubai Resort. The Heart of Europe sought to interconnect several islands, crafting a seamless experience. Each island embraced a unique European theme, honoring diverse cultures and architectural styles. In contrast, the Anantara World Island Dubai Resort unveiled the quandaries inherent in the project's original vision, representing various nations through architecture and culture in hotels posed challenges. While some themes shone brightly like the Côte d'Azur Hotel, others raised questions particularly the Germany-themed hotel, sparking debates about the efficacy of this approach. Hotels must conform to specific standards and cater to a global audience, restricting their capacity to fully embrace unique cultural themes. The overarching challenge, however, remained the project's ability to allure affluent travelers. The islands stood remote, primarily accessible via boat or helicopter, with limited return options. When contrasted with established luxury destinations, the World Islands faced a daunting ascent. In the end, the grand vision of the World Islands lingers as an enticing dream, with many islands yet to realize their potential. The audacious endeavor to mirror the world's continents in the Persian Gulf stands as a testament to Dubai's ambition and the intricate nature of colossal development. As we conclude this odyssey through the World Islands and Dubai's real estate journey, we trust you've relished this deep dive into the history and tribulations of this iconic project. If this narrative has captivated your curiosity and fascination, consider expressing your appreciation with a thumbs up, sharing your reflections in the comments, and perusing additional videos on similar themes in this channel's expansive repository. Thank you for joining us, and until our next rendezvous, remain ever inquisitive. But just a moment. Since we make a lot of effort when it comes to our videos and especially the creation of the different storylines about Dubai, we would be happy if you share our channel with other Dubai fans or those who want to become one. We have also included the most exciting videos for you to watch. Maybe you are interested in one of these topics. In any case, we always do our best to fascinate and entertain you as our viewer as much as possible. We thank you in advance and look forward to welcoming you and your friends again in more videos.